All right, here we go. It's finally time to start putting this thing back together. Now, the very first part we're going to install is gonna be the new camshaft phasers, as you can see right here. So grab yourself an intake phaser and an exhaust phaser, bring it to the bench, along with your secondary timing chain. Now, we need to time these together and then take them over as a set with the chain and lock them onto the camshafts. Now, the way you do this is you want to align the tiny mark on the phaser with the colored links on the chain. So the intake phaser only has one mark on it. Doesn't matter, it's always that mark. Whereas the exhaust phaser has a left hand and a right hand side. So we're working on the passenger side right now. So we're gonna go after the R mark on here. If you didn't know it already, the left hand always refers to the driver's side and the right hand always refers to the passenger side in the automotive industry. So let's do it. So we're gonna install the chain onto the intake phaser first. We get it lined up on there and locked in the groove and then we'll wrap the chain around. Just like so. Okay, you see that right there? And then we're gonna find the R, since we're working on the passenger side, and we're simply gonna line up the next colored link on here with the R. Get it in the slot, and again, wrap it around. We'll do a post check real quick. We're lined up, we're lined up. You can see it right there. And then we're gonna take this whole thing over to the vehicle. Now before you install these phasers, you wanna make sure you compress the secondary timing chain tensioner once again, if it's not already. So we'll get in here the same way we did earlier. We'll get it in that little notch back here and get it held into place. Like so. And then we're gonna take our set of phasers and we're gonna line up the locking pins with the phasers. Make sure you keep them together. And you'll see it just kind of falls into place. Both sides will be able to lock in. Let's see where your mark is at on there. in and your other side is going to do the same exact thing you see we're locked in there you won't be able to turn them no more you can tell they're locked in there locking pins on there good to go and then we're going to install new bolts okay now the super long bolt is for the exhaust side you can see it sticks out much much further we'll get that started by hand and the other one, again, you want to use new bolts that torque to yield. Um, so we'll get these snugged up on here. Hold it in place. Here we go. Right there, we're nice and locked on. Everything's nice and true. At this point, you can release uh, the chain tensioner on there. Get your tool out of there. There we go. And that's it. Make sure your chain's contacting down here. It's in the guide there. And then we're going to loosen the bolt one full turn. or until it's loose enough to spin by hand. Yep. Same thing for the intake. Get it loose. We just use that 30 foot pounds to initially set the phasers in place. Now we're gonna snug these by hand real quick. Next, we are going to torque each one of these to 18 foot pounds.
At this point, with both of these torqued down to 18 foot-pounds, we're going to turn the bolt another 180 degrees. Now, the way you make sure that you are turning at 180 degrees is you mark the bolt at, let's say, the 12 o'clock position, and then you mark the phaser at the 6 o'clock position. And then we'll turn it all the way over until it lines up with that. Same thing on the intake. All right, here we go. Now this is gonna be another one of those times where that um, tool, the locking tool may shift on you. So you wanna hold it in place. And it's gonna take quite a bit to do this, so make sure you have a good breaker bar on hand. Take it off and check it. We're pretty darn close, you know me. I like to go a little bit more just to make sure in case our marks are off just a little bit. And right about there, you'll feel it. All of a sudden the bolt gets really tight out of nowhere. Um, when your marks line up, you'll notice it. Same thing over here. With this one being an even shorter bolt, it's just gonna make it that much harder because there's not as much stretch to it. Um, but same thing applies, 180 degrees. Check it. A little more. That's why it's nice to have these marks on here. Make sure we do it right. All right, we're pretty darn close. I'll give it a little bit more. All right, we're good to go there. And we're good to go there. Now this side right now is set. The phasers are installed. Do the same exact procedure on the other bank. Okay, so with both phasers on both banks installed, torqued down, tensioners released, all that good stuff, we can actually start timing the engine. This right here is just an idler gear and our crankshaft sprocket is already in position from before when we took all this apart. So I can't show you the exact procedure because it's just too hard of an angle here. What I will do is show you the basic procedure and then we'll go through with the camera around and show you in detail how it should look. Now your new chain is gonna have a couple different colored links to it. You have a yellow one, a gold one here, or bronze, and then you're gonna have another one. You see it right there? It's gonna be a twofer, okay? That one goes down at the crankshaft and it's gonna span the dot on the crankshaft. Whereas these ones will all fall right into line. Okay, so it's one big old freaking chain and what you want to do is find the side that has the two links on it right there you're gonna let that dangle down by the crankshaft down here and we're gonna take the next link up which is the gold one and we're gonna put it right onto this phaser on the driver's side now remember you have to you know snake this chain through here and all the other good stuff just to get it passed. And then we're going to lay it onto here. Right onto that dot on this phaser. And that'll start us, that'll be our starting point for the whole procedure on here. So get this down, just lay it all the way around. Okay. Now before you go any further, you want to do the same thing. You want to snake it past on this side. Um, so we can get it past while it's still flexible, you know, semi-flexible. And uh, we can twist it and get a pass there. Let's see, we're going up and over. 
wrong side. This one. All right, there we go. So we'll take this side, we'll bring it down, pull it tight, bring it around the idler down here. Do, 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 do. We'll give it some slack. It's a little cumbersome, you know, working with one huge chain like this. It's just gonna get caught on everything like this. Um, the idea here though, is to just give yourself as much slack as possible. Okay. Okay, there we go. Now we're gonna pull it tight. Coming down here, and we're gonna line up with one of these teeth on here, just to get spline with idler here. Okay, looks good to go. But right here is not. So we need to get it in this guide. We need to tuck it into there. Tuck it, tuck it, tuck it, tuck it. Get our slack. Okay, we're good to go. Pulling it tight, pulling it tight. Make sure it's splining all the way around. And then we're gonna come up to the passenger side phaser. Keep pulling it tight, and you'll notice, boom, dots right there, marks right there. It all just kind of falls into place. That's what's great about the Colored Link system. So we're good to go here. This is good to go. We'll bring it around. Now over here, we're gonna install the other guide, okay? But first, you wanna drop your chain down and around that sprocket down there for the crankshaft. And then we're gonna bring our guide over and get the chain out of the way, line up our bolt marks here. The long bolt goes in the bottom. Sneak this behind. Uh, get it in here. your chain in front of it. You can see it's a huge, huge mess We're doing this. There we go. Get our bolts started by hand. Make sure they're okay. That'll keep the tension on a little bit there. Let's make sure when it comes down that our crankshaft sprocket is still in the notch there. There we go. Just like that. So it's splined with the crankshaft sprocket down there. And we'll just snug these in here for now. So it holds it in place, it's not flopping. And then we're gonna go for the primary side over here. All right, get our tensioner arm up and into place. And our dowel pin here, that's gonna fit in there pretty snug. Work it in there. You also need to pull our chain around too. So it's out of the way. All right. There we go. Okay, so that's all into place. Our marks are all still lined up. Everything is in place. Good to go. It's wrapped around the crankshaft down here. And now we're going to install our tensioner, our new tensioner. Tilt you down a little bit there, see what's going on. Okay, so we'll get our tensioner down in here, our brand new tensioner. Get it behind. Get your top bolt in so it holds it in place for us. Couple threads by hand, make sure it feels good. And then we'll get the bottom bolt in to place. And that'll keep some tension against this, um, this tensioner arm, okay? There we go. All 
the same thing. We'll snug it down for now. All right, now, with your tensioner arm, your guide, your chain, everything's in place. It's coming around the sprocket down here. Before you pull the grenade pin, you want to make sure you go around and you, all your marks are good to go still, okay? Make sure they're all good to go, and we can pull that pin. All right, the engine is timed. Now let's go over it in detail so you can check yours and make sure it looks exactly like mine. So we'll start over on the left-hand head here. You can see the upper mark right there. It's all lined up. It comes down and around past the guide here. Follow it down, down, down. You can see how it spans the crankshaft timing mark. Come over and around, up past the tensioner arm here. The tensioner is in the pocket right there. Okay, come up, come up, 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 come up and around. That one lines up, and then of course it just goes down and splines with the idler gear. On through. And that's how it should look when it's timed. Now the last thing we need to do is torque down um, this side's guide, the, the two bolts on there, and then we're going to release that pin. All right, torque spec on these guide bolts here and here, and the tensioner bolts is 89 inch pounds. Torque those down, and then we can pull this sucker and let it come on out. Now there's not much tension, but it's a ratcheting design. So it does work very, very, very well. Good to go. I like to do a post check real quick of everything. Make sure it's still good to go before I start buttoning things up. 